Hey folks, I'm Tommy Master from data36.com and this video is a little bit of an off topic on this channel, but I wanted to share this anyway. Today I will show you how you can track your investment portfolio in Google Sheets. It's gonna be simple, automated and free. If you ever put money into stocks, bonds or crypto or ETFs or anything, you know that it's a major problem, at least for small investors, that usually you use different tools for different types of investments. And so you cannot really see all these things together, sort of the big picture of your investments in one place. And in this video, we will fix this issue with a very simple and free solution. Now, if you are a subscriber on this channel, you know that I usually talk about data science and I use code to solve problems. For instance, we could build this automated investment portfolio tracker tool in Python easily, but I intentionally chose an even simpler tool to get this down, and it's Google Sheets. You know, I love coding, I love Python, but sometimes I have to admit that spreadsheet tools are just perfect to get simpler things down. And this is what we will do today. Let's see that. Before we get started, I have no idea how anything in this video could be taken as financial advice, but my legal guy said that I should say this, so I will say this. Remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. If you want to learn about finance and investments, make sure you reach out to a qualified financial advisor. I'm not one. I just show you a solution that I built for myself so you can have fun with it too. Anyways, I share my screen and this is the spreadsheet I use. As I said, the key here is to stay simple and create a high level overview of all the investments one has. And the key of the whole thing is just one single Google Sheet formula. The rest is just basic calculations and some visualization. I will show you this formula soon, but first let me show you the logic of this spreadsheet. So I basically have two big important parts here, the invested amount part and the current value part. In the invested amount part, I can type in the money I invested to a certain type of asset. And in the current value part, I can calculate the current value of the very same thing. I will show you one simple example. Quick disclaimer, this is not an actual amount I invested. I put here dummy numbers for the sake of example. Okay, so let's say I put some money into S&P 500. And the amount is 1,200 euros. I don't know, let's say it was two years ago. And let's say that when I did that, I made a note for myself here. And after that, Anytime in the future, I can see the calculated actual value of this investment. And for that, I will need two data points. The first one is how many shares did I buy? Let's say I bought five for this price. And the next data point I need, of course, is the current price. And here comes the trick. We have to use the Google Finance formula. I will do that here and I prefer this table with a few values, but it doesn't matter. You can tweak this to your own needs. So here it is S&P 500 and I can get the current value of the S&P 500 by typing this formula, Google Finance. And then the ticker of my ETF, which in this case was CSPX which is this iShares Core S&P 500 ETF. Hit enter. And this Google Finance formula is pretty awesome because it shows nearly real-time data of different financial assets and currencies and whatnot. And well, in this specific case, the problem is that it shows the value in US dollars and I actually need this in euros. And this is totally personal. I just like to track my portfolio in euros because I live in Europe, but you can change this to any currency you prefer. 
you just have to type again here to the USD Euro part, uh, Google Finance again, and this time I want to get currency data and the rate of the USD Euro. Okay, there you go. So this means that one dollar right now costs 0.84 euros and after having all this data it all comes down to a simple multiplication which comes here so i have five f s p 500 shares i multiply it with the current value of s p 500 in dollars then i multiply it with the usd to euro exchange rate i hit enter and there it is there is the calculated current value of the initial investment. Okay, done. As you can see, you can calculate the growth rate too. It's a simple division. I actually added an if error formula as well. So if this is zero, then it will be an empty value instead of an error message. That's just a small tweak. But that's pretty much it. This Google Finance formula is the only thing you need to know. And after that, it's all up to your creativity, how you build up your tracker tool. I will quickly show you what I use, but again, you can tweak this further. So with the very same method, you can fill up this spreadsheet with all your investment types. And to be honest, I like to aggregate stuff so I don't have S&P 500 here. The specific categories I use are bond, low risk, ETFs, mid-risk ETFs, high-risk ETFs, stock, crypto, cash. Now, if you are a real nerd, you can add here more categories like real estate or I don't know, but it doesn't really make sense. So this is just fine. And you feel free to make this more sophisticated if you want to. I like to use these aggregated categories rather than having all the assets one by one. And let me fill this up with dummy numbers. Again, this is not my portfolio, it's just for the sake of example. And this is definitely not financial advice. Okay, let's say that in the past we bought bonds for 5000 euros, we bought low risk ETFs for 2000 euros, mid risk ETFs for 500, uh, 500 euros, we didn't buy high risk ETFs, stocks for 1000 euros, crypto for 3000 euros, and cash, we have cash, 1000 euros. And so for instance, low risk ETF can be in this case, a mix of two different type of ETFs, like for instance, an S&P 500 and then an overt kind of ETF. It can be added like 1,500 euros for one and 500 for the other. And I bring these very same categories here, and then I will calculate the current value of these investments. And again, we will need a lot of Google Finance data here. And here I listed just a few examples and I will get the Google Finance data for these one by one. So for Bitcoin to Euro, I will use Google Finance currency, BTC Euro. There it is, I will query the same thing for Ethereum and for Litecoin. And again, based on that, to calculate my crypto investments, I will have to know exactly how much Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum I have. And for instance, you can have 0.3 Bitcoin. So you will do the multiplication with the Bitcoin value. Then you add 0.6 Ethereum, if you bought 0.6 Ethereum back in the past, and let's say you own one Litecoin. So you do the multiplications, you add this up, 
and you have a sweet 12,000 euros current value here. And of course, the growth rate is huge in this specific example. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just a dummy example. Okay, cash is simple because cash is just cash. It doesn't change. And just one last example. And after that, I will just speed the video up. Here we have a stock, Virgin Galactic, Google Finance. I will add the ticker. So it's on the New York Stock Exchange and it's called Space. And so, of course, this is in dollars. And let's say that we bought 19 Virgin Galactic shares. I multiply this with the dollars value. And of course, I will have to multiply this with the dollar euro exchange rate. And there it is. Now, in this example, this has a negative growth rate. And I will do the same for the rest. So let me speed this up. Okay, we have all the data and we can do the calculations. And for the bonds, you can build your own formula or sometimes you can query it, but I will just fill this up manually, 5,200. And there you go. This is pretty nice, I think. Here are the growth rates. Here is the growth rate of the whole portfolio. Again, this is pu purely hypothetical, but the growth rate is pretty nice here. And uh, if you don't have investments in some category, it will stay empty. For that, you will need this if error formula. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, you might have noticed a few more things. And first, of course, the visuals here. Whoops. It's just a nice thing to see how the balance of the portfolio changed compared to the initial investments. For instance, when I record this video, probably in all portfolios, crypto grew big right? The other thing is the risk. And let me fill this up from 1 to 10. And let's say that bonds are less risky. Um, low risk ETFs are 3, 5, let's say 7, 7. Crypto is very risky. 7. Cash. Hmm, cash recently. Extremely risky. No, just kidding. Let's, let's give it a 2. Okay, I copy paste this here. And so these risk values are, of course, totally gut feeling based. So when I set the risk level here, it shows my personal impression about the risk level of a given investment. But it's also common sense at some level. Either way, just for the sake of the example, I put some numbers here. And so the nice thing is that I can calculate a weighted average of the risks here, I have already done that. So this is a weighted average. And if I find that my current portfolio is too risky compared to the originally invested amount, I can always go a bit more conservative by adding less risky investments. Like in this arbitrary example, if crypto grew big, maybe I want to add some lower risk investments to bring down these values. And that's pretty much it. Of course, this way of tracking your investment portfolio has some obvious limitations. The biggest one is that you don't see the year over year growth, neither for one single type of investment, nor the whole portfolio. And, you know, in some cases, if you want to evaluate your individual investments, it's essential. As I use this spreadsheet just to get a simple high level overview of my portfolio, I don't want to add that because that would add too much complexity to this project. And that's not the goal here. The goal, for me at least, is to have a one pager where I see the big picture. But you know, you can break this down if you want to. You can add more lines, you can add dates, you can add more charts if you want to. You can tweak the whole thing to your needs. The only thing that I wanted to show you here is this simple Google Finance formula. 
that you can use to query near real-time financial data for many, many assets and currencies. And with that, you can bring all your investment data in one Google Sheet. Now, I shared the link of this tracker in the description, so you feel free to click and copy if you want to. If you have questions or comments, feel free to add them in the comment section below. And if you are here for data science videos, sorry for being off topic for the day, next time I will get back with more data science related stuff, I promise. Regardless, I think you can take away one thing for sure from this video. Some things can be and should be solved without coding. So spreadsheets are definitely not that. But with that being said, this is the end of this video. If you liked it, please subscribe, leave a like or a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter at data36.com slash newsletter, because this is the only place where I really communicate to my audience right now. So this is where you can get notified about new content as well. And if you do subscribe, you will get access to a lot of free data science learning materials, like a Python cheat sheet, an SQL cheat sheet, or a free mini course called How to Become a Data Scientist. Thank you for watching. I'm Tommy Master. Until next time.